I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this. Gus on Twitter has tweeted several videos where he now has Windows 10X, the operating system that was meant for Surface Neo, now working quite well on Surface Duo. And I don't quite have this functioning yet. I've got it installed, but I've only got one screen working. And hopefully Gus can help me figure out why uh, I haven't managed to get it working quite as well as he's showing in this video. So I don't have that to show you in this video, but I thought what I could do is I could show you the next best thing and we could kind of take a look at Windows 10X in a sort of simulated manner. And how we're doing this is through using a emulator for Windows. It's literally the Microsoft emulator that you can find in the Microsoft Store. If you search for Microsoft emulator, this is it. Of course, you have to source the Windows 10X image, and I don't necessarily know that I can point you towards that. I'm not sure what the legality of that is, so we're just going to ignore that bit for now. But what we have on this other monitor is Windows 10X running inside of this emulator. So like I said, we're gonna take a look at some of this stuff and I kind of show you what Surface Neo would have been like in a roundabout way. So we're simulating touches with this mouse here. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that the taskbar is automatically shrunk down. So you can either tap it or you can swipe up on it. And either way, you're gonna have this thing sort of expand. I think swiping up on it sometimes will cause the whole thing to come up depending on how far you do it. But at any rate, you can tap on it and then you get these two icons here. One is your task view that shows your open tasks. And of course the other one opens up the start menu. Now you can see here that it's it's actually clipping across uh, the screen. It's going off the screen here. So things aren't quite working totally correctly, but correctly enough. So let's launch Microsoft Edge. And okay, one thing there that's interesting, it launched it on the last monitor that was launched on uh, instead of the one that I actually clicked the icon on. But we can switch screens with this very quickly. Now, unlike on Duo where it's a swipe from the bottom, you actually go from the top. So you touch up here at the top and you can drag it from screen to screen or you can drag it to the middle and span it. And if this looks similar to Surface Duo on Android, uh, yeah, that's because that is exactly the same behavior. Although one thing you can see here is that we're not losing the content. It is actually still able to show you everything. There's nothing missing behind the hinge. And you know, a lot of Surface Duo users absolutely hate that on the Surface Duo. Well, Windows 10X did not have this problem. But again, Windows has dual monitor support, whereas Android does not. Let's go and open up another application. Let's do the Microsoft Store. And so you can see here, Two apps side by side, very nice. Let's drag one on top of the other. And does this have, yeah, so that still has that going. Quickly switch screens back to the other. Multitasking looks to be really, really solid in Windows 10X. And it would have been really solid in Neo had it ever actually been like a functional device. So we'll take a quick moment and I'm just gonna kind of mention this here because I know I'm gonna get comments from people saying, why didn't they ship Neo? Why didn't they ship Neo? Here's the reality. Windows 10X was not a completed operating system. And as you dive into this, you can see that there's very little going on in this operating system. For one, Win32 applications uh, not natively supported in this. Lots of work still needed to be done on Windows 10X. But another aspect of this is that the architecture that Neo was built on, which was basically a thing that Intel made, I think it was called Lakefield or something like that. It was meant to be like, hey, what if Intel made something that was kind of like ARM? And the answer was, it would be terrible. It overheated constantly. It was super buggy. It crashed all the time. I've even heard rumors that the stand that Neo was on, on stage, was actually cooling the device from below just to keep the thing running. Neo was in horrifically rough shape. So they didn't ship it because one, Lakefield got canceled. So it no longer had a platform with which to run on. Two, Windows 10X got canceled because it wasn't going anywhere. And then three, even if it was, it couldn't have been shipped in the state it was in. It was absolutely buggy and broken. So Neo just was never going to be a thing. As for why did Duo not ship with this operating system? That's a bit of a more difficult question. But honestly, they'd already tried their own operating system on Surface Duo, a Windows-based OS, and it wasn't very good either. So they decided that going with Android 
was the best option that they had. So that's the direction that they went. So let's take a look here at some of the settings. Not a whole lot. Under system, you can see display tells you very, very little. There's almost nothing here to do. Under sound, this is kind of similar to what we currently have, but there's not, not a whole lot going on here. Just your input, output, power, and sleep. Literally all you have in this is to turn off the screen when it's plugged in uh, you know, a certain amount of time. Very little you can do there. Clipboard history, that's pretty interesting to see. You can actually turn that on. Press Windows logo key plus V to show your history. That's a pretty cool one to have. Of course, this would have had pin support. You can see some of the options that you would have had here for that. As for personalization, there you can see a couple of different wallpapers that were you know, potentially going to be part of the Surface Neo experience. What about the taskbar itself? Default size. You can actually change. Look how big that is. That's interesting. So let's see if we shrink this down. That's very, very small. Interesting. Looks like we're still up to date. So that's good to see. <laughs> let's take a look over here at some of these other options that we have, though. So we can actually change the orientation. So let's flip it around. We're going to have to resize this thing. And you can see that when you rotate it, this is kind of what you're dealing with now. Can we still span it? Yes, we can. Let's drag it and span it. Nope, that was not what I wanted to do. Let's uh, try that again. There we go, span. Okay, so spanning one app like this makes it a very, very tall application. Let's actually go in and let's launch Edge and let's try to span that. And we'll go to someplace like YouTube and you can see how this would have worked. Not too bad. Again, you can see the content is not being lost behind the hinge. You could, of course, also do this one screen or the other. Double click to switch screens. Where have we seen that exact thing before? Exactly as it is on Duo. Pretty cool to see, though. Rotating it around. Still functioning just fine. Here's an interesting one down here in the control center, which looks very reminiscent of what it looks like now Windows 11. What about Compose Mode? If we click on that, guess what we get, guys? There's that gigantic keyboard. Let's go ahead and flip this around so that we can actually see it a bit better. And let's shrink it down. You can see here that we can click on a text box and begin typing there. Potential autocorrects living up there. And I believe, is this acting? What is this doing? Oh, this is like some kind of a cursor. See it moving things around? I bet this is operating as a trackpad, but it's just not, it is absolutely operating as a trackpad. So that is pretty cool. And then of course, normally if we want to type something, we just get an on-screen keyboard. If we move the program over to the other side, keyboard will pop up on the other side. Again, very, very similar to how it works on Surface Duo. Honestly, guys, there's a lot of really good ideas here, and I think that a lot of these ideas would translate to Duo fairly well. Definitely a lot better than standard Windows. I've talked about this ad nauseum that Windows needs tweaks to make it work better on two tiny screens. Well, 10X has those tweaks. Hopefully, what we're able to see are these sorts of things be built for Windows 11 on Duo as time goes on, because running 10X is really not all that viable unless you can do most of your tasks inside the web browser. But I don't think that's like a great solution. I do intend to have 10X working as Gus has here at some point. Hopefully he can help me figure out what I did wrong in the setup. There are some files I had to try and do some things to make it work like he has it working there and apparently something went wrong. But anyways, hopefully I have that very, very soon. But for now, Maybe this will tide you over until then. Big shout out to Gus for the help, as usual, getting this bit of it working to show you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Subscribe before you go. And until then, stay nerdy, my friends.